Memphis is such a melting pot. This is where I was in those formative years of chasing a dream. This city kind of enabled me to do that. Yeah! Memphis. This is the street that I grew up on. We are out in Eads, Tennessee. This is Silsby Lane, and we're about to go to the house that I grew up in. Who's that guy? It was just so much fun to see you develop as an artist after being captain of the football team to turning inward and really deciding what he wanted out of life. So we're here at Arlington High School. This is the football field, and we're about to go into the old locker room and talk to two of my coaches. Drew was a phenomenal player. He was a beast on the football field. He was not going to bow down to anybody. He was going to be the best. Football meant something to Drew, and when that was taken away, you know, he had the bug to go a different direction, and, and I think it paid off. So going into my senior year, though, I was trying to shave some time off of my 40-yard dash and wound up blowing out one of my hamstrings. The injury kind of opened my eyes a little bit. I would have gone and played somewhere, chasing the dream, but inevitably it would have dissolved at some point but the timing was very important. I'm not surprised in you finding success as a musician, but you have that common thread, and that is a drive and a desire to succeed. It, it definitely hasn't been a straight path for me. I remember and all the work that it's taken to get to where I am now, and I wouldn't be here without Mark Barcel and South Main Sounds and, and Memphis, Tennessee. Drew Irwin, welcome home. South Main Sounds is, it's a bit of an incubator for creativity, songwriting, and you know, the process that goes into it. Pretty weird to be back here. I spent a lot of time in this little dungeon. And this is the studio that I kind of built back when I was in college. It was my first creative space that I called my own. I definitely learned a lot down here. I learned a lot about myself. It really kind of exposed me to the songwriting scene in Memphis, because I would be down here working in the basement and they would be having songwriter association meetings upstairs and people who do care about original music. The big reason that I write songs is one day when I'm not here anymore, I think it's really cool that my family and my kids and their kids will have a way of, of knowing who I was. Songs feel like little time capsules, like little feelings bottled up. And it's cool to be able to reference these different points in my life. We are headed to the Silly Goose, which is the bar that I played at for three years of my life. People weren't really listening. It was like a fly on the wall gig, just cover songs for, for the tip jar. And, and they treated me like family. Playing here definitely taught me how to read a crowd. And like, if I saw a group of people walk in, I'd be like, all right, that old guy right there wants some James Taylor. They would turn their head, and then they'd throw me a 20. And I think that has transferred over into my live set. For me, writing songs, it's therapeutic. I'm trying to get back to the core of why I started all this. You know, an injury can halt your sporting career, but with music, I can sit down and write a song or express myself with my voice until the day that I die. As far as community goes, and as far as my family and my friends, I think that's always been this feeling of comfort for me to know that if this music thing doesn't wind up turning into what I want it to be, I'll always have the support, I'll always have somewhere to go, I'll always have people who love me, and that this place is always gonna be here.